Okay, so the uh, the first step in this nightmare, I, I mean process, is uh, getting a proper exposure using your camera. So what we gotta do first is we gotta go into, I'll try to, uh, we, we go into the, uh, the paint menu and we go to our gamma and we gotta check what we're, we have our gamma set to. So in this case, we're gonna be using hyper gamma eight. And if you'll notice the last two numbers on there, 33, that means 33% IRE. So that means in middle gray, the, the, you'll get the maximum range out of the camera, out of that particular curve, when middle gray, a middle gray card, 18% uh, gray card is set at 33% IRE. So the number itself tells you valuable information of what you need to know. So that's the gamma curve. We're just double checking and we got the right gamma curve. So then we um, back out of this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our viewfinder settings and we're gonna go to zebras. Now, what we wanna do here is we wanna get the most accurate reading we can. So we're gonna set it to zebra one. We're gonna set the zebra level to 33% IRE, that's IRE. And we're gonna give ourselves a very small window of error, so that would be 3%. So basically anywhere from 33 to 36%, the zebras will start showing. So we want that to be a fairly uh, narrow window. So we've double checked our gamma curve, we've got our zebra set, then it's pretty easy actually from here, all we've got to do is adjust our iris, our aperture, until we see the zebras. And then what I like to do is I like to make sure that the zebras are appearing right over the, the center target, because then I can just zero in on that one particular spot, the center of the card. And uh, if we look, now the most important reading on this whole thing, if I look at the, the waveform monitor, it really is so small you can only get an approximation. But I can see that the that where the gray card is, it's falling in that range, I would say 30 to 40%. So I'm, I'm in there. I feel pretty confident that I've got a pretty good where it's supposed to be as far as middle gray goes. Now, if I look at what the aperture is, it's very small to see. I don't know if you can see it, but it's f2.5. So according to the camera, with the aperture set uh, with ISO at 1600, at uh, a shutter speed of 148, with the aperture at f2.5, and kind of double checking on the waveform monitor, the camera's saying that I should be able to get a the most dynamic range uh, with these settings. So that's what the camera says. So the Sony FS7, it has a mind of its own, and according to it, that's the settings I need for a proper exposure. So once the settings are matched on the, the light meter from the camera, so we have a frame rate, not the shutter speed, but the frame rate is 24 frames per second, and the ISO is 1600. Then once we have those settings input, then I take a meter reading, a spot meter reading on the grade card. And if we look at what we get, the light meter says 2.8 and a third, three tenths of a stop. What the light meter is saying and the camera are saying are, are two different things. So you would think, well, this isn't gonna be very helpful because they're not even in agreement. But what you can do is there's a function on your light meter called ISO 2. So right now it's set at ISO 1. But what you do is you, if you press ISO 2 down, and then you adjust, what you do is then you adjust your ISO to get it as close as possible to what the camera was saying the correct f-stop would be. In this case, it was saying 2.5. And so what I, what I find on this is that if I press ISO 2 down and adjust the ISO on this, it's very close to 2.5. It's, it's just maybe one-tenth of a stop off. So when the, when the light meter is offset by 600 ISO, so, so if I have it set at 1600 ISO, I'm about to stop over. If I adjust the ISO on the light meter down to 1000, I'm matching what the camera's saying exactly. So in a sense, I'm offsetting the ISO on the light meter to compensate for the discrepancy between them. 
So now when I, I set the camera not to the light meter not to the exact ISO on the camera, but offset it by about 600, I actually do get a proper reading with the light meter. And that's what that ISO 2 function is for, to allow you to calibrate or rate your light meter to what your camera's sensors and are telling it. So, so now I can use my light meter to get a proper exposure as long as I have a gray card. So I can take the gray card with me into any room, into any setter, setting, put the gray card where the subject is going to be. And with my light meter, I can get the same, I can get a very accurate reading on what would be proper exposure for that scene and that setting. And I don't need to be lugging my camera everywhere I go. I just need my light meter and the gray card. And I can know that I'll be able to um, figure out what I need to do in advance of the situation uh, in terms of lenses, in terms of lighting, and in terms of everything else that I would need. So, um, so I hope this was helpful. Um, I, I much prefer using a light meter um, than the camera. I just I find it a lot quicker and faster and easier to use a light meter. But the but first, the first step is make sure you're you get a proper exposure with your camera settings, and then rate offset your light meter to match that of your camera, and then you can use your light meter to get a quick, easy, and reliable exposure for your scene. And just to, to follow up here now, if I if I remove my gray card, I have a subject there. Uh, mannequin's head and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot some quick test footage and then we'll take a look at it 